How's it going out there, Average Joe readers? Today, I'm finally going to give you my thoughts on The Count of Monte Cristo. First, like, subscribe, do your thing, whatever it is, send me a comment. And now uh, for Count of Monte Cristo, I've alluded to this in a few videos, a few posts. I've had small little rants um, in some videos in the last few months. It's no secret that I've felt at times not the best toward this book. Uh, it's taken me, it took me a very long time to read it, about three and a half months. So I'm here to do a reflections and a rant about the Count of Monte Cristo. And before I get started, I'm going to have two disclaimers before um, I get into it. Number one, I am no expert in literature or have a lot of experience in literature, classic literature, historical lit literature, anything that's um, of a high classical nature. Absolutely no ex expert ex experience in it. Uh, I'm not even classifying this as a review because I'm not sophisticated or smart enough to give a proper review of The Count of Monte Cristo. This is just a reflections and a personal thoughts and feelings and rant about the Count of Monte Cristo now through a, honestly, through a new reader, an average Joe's lens, because I am not an avid uh, classical reader. I do not, I never read the um, assigned readings in classes in school and all those classical things and these books that are, you know, must reads. I read for pure, just fun, for a fun ride, for escapism, all those things that I've said in other videos. So that's the lens that I'm looking at as an average reader nowadays. Uh, so that's number one disclaimer. Number two, I'm going to have mild plot spoilers talking about this because I want to vent about a few things. Now I'm not going to go into certain specifics or like certain characters' names for like either whether it's death or what happened to them, but I am going to overall tell you certain things that kind of happen. But this story is over 200 years old, so like. It's been around long enough, I guess, so it's fine to talk about some things. And honestly, if you go and read it, you'll probably forget some of this anyway. But in general, people know the plot of Count of Monte Cristo. So getting into it, the general plot and premise of the book is it's a revenge story. This guy, Dante's, gets framed for being a Napoleon conspirator or apology or whatever supporter. And people conspired to, and people like these, these guys are just sitting around a table. Basically, it was like Mean Girls. You're wearing sweatpants. It's Monday. So? So that's against the rules, and you can't sit with us. Whatever. You can't sit with us! These three guys are sitting around a table, and we're just like, you know what? Let's get him out of our lives. And they frame him, and he goes away in jail for 14 years, locked away in solitary. And eventually he escapes, goes under a new name called Count the Monte Cristo, uh, gets a lot of money, and then starts to do his revenge. That is the overall plot of it. That is like the first third of the book. And then you pick up when he's the count after the first third, and you get a whole bunch of new characters and other places. And it's a very slow burn, slow burn revenge. So that is how the premise is. And then you're going through the story of him kind of agitating conflicts with within the worlds of these people he needs to get revenge on and you're kind of wondering how he's going to pull it off how, how you know it's very subtle revenge it's very direct as well um how is he going to do these these people undo what they've done because a lot of them have succeeded in life now they are have either made a lot of money or have gotten big promotions or whatever what have you so how is he going to do this to people and he is very much in their face and around them so it is a very intricate, intricative, intricate, intricate plan. And there's a lot of connections, a lot of connections and a little too many connections uh, to how these people are still connected and who's connected to who. So the plans are, are, are deep. He's definitely been plotting this for a very long time. At times I kind of question like how, you know, he was just a sailor as a kid, a sailor, like 17 or 18. Then he was in jail for 14 years, didn't get any education except for he was just talking to one person. Then all of a sudden he goes and turns all this money into even more money and has all these deep, deep layer plans. And like, how did he get so smart in such a short amount of time without much education? That was kind of eyebrow raising to me, but like, I guess if you're motivated enough and if you're dedicated enough, then you can make things happen. He's also traveled around all, the, all over the place. So 
those kind of raised eyebrows, but I didn't really care about it as much. So that's the general premise of it. And for some of the good parts, yes, it is very deep in the, um, the planning and the, the revenge. I love those things. The first third of the book I was totally into when he got caught, uh, when he got locked up as he was in jail and then breaking out of jail, all of those things I was very into. I was, it was very simple. It was very detailed. And there were some things in the, in the jail while he was locked up. Cause he was in jail for like 150 pages or something, 200 pages. There's some parts of that where it could have been trimmed down, but like, I didn't mind it as much. I was, I was still enjoying the story and the, and the connection. And like, you're really, really feeling deep for him and what he's been through and the struggle he was going through. And then his out, his breakout was, was fantastic. And then right after that happened, when he got his riches and other characters started being introduced, that's when I was being started to be pulled out of the story. And I broke up this reading. I did about, I did it into about thirds ish. Uh, probably kind of three or four chunks. I read the first 350 pages and around the 300, 350 page mark is when other characters start coming in and things just seem out of place and start to drag. And there's a lot of extra stuff that I felt was unnecessary. So I had to take a break then. And then I took a break for a couple of weeks, came back, picked it up. Okay, there was a cool moment. They were in the carnival in Italy. That was kind of a fun sequence, whatever. They get to Paris and I'm kind of falling off the map again. So it was kind of ups and downs, a lot of, long drag out parts that don't they don't all feel necessary and there's times where it'll be 50 pages of just nonsense background stuff happening and like there's little snippets little nuggets within here that actually matter and it's like that 50 pages could have been shortened just to deliver these nuggets and i'm not saying that they just need to be handed delivered to you to a you know info dumpy type thing but you can surmise you can you can boil it down a little bit more you can let, let, let's reduce some of this water and let's get really down to what the flavors is okay so that's kind of an overview and early thoughts of it so something that another booktuber mentioned in his video uh larry has opinions he he just finished it the same time i did literally i like finished it one day uh, the next day i was starting to do my prep and he came out with a video of his thoughts of why he thinks it's too long. He has a fantastic video on it. Larry has opinions. I'll link it below. Him and I are pretty, pretty similar on everything we're going to say. Uh, I'll try and depart a little bit and say some other things, but um, check out his as well. Cause he, he breaks down some other things that I, that I don't or didn't think of. But one of the main things that I wanted to talk about through the bulk of the story is it kind of felt like a, for the, for the huge part in the middle, like the, big chunk like 500 page chunk in the middle or whatever it kind of felt like a victorian soap opera like you're just having these three families and you just they're like there's only like a couple different sets they're just taking place in each other's houses almost i don't know why they all only hang out with each other but these takes place in these houses and it's basically just family drama and while there were times that i think the count initiated it and like kind of poked the bear a little bit so many things happened that were out of his control that you just wonder like there's no way your revenge planned for this. Like this bad thing happened at the end, but dude, you did like nothing to achieve this. So one of my biggest complaints about this is that there's a lot of plot conveniences, a whole lot of plot conveniences. It's one thing to plan a revenge. And like, when I think of these intricately planned revenges, I think of also like a heist. Both of these things have elements of deep plotting. Uh, you have this plan for a long time. You have players and actors to help you out you have these sequences where, okay, when I do this, this is initiated and then this is initiated and I have this plan here happening. With the count, it's like, yeah, I'm going to initiate this and then we'll see what happens. And then this happens and this happens and the count's just like nowhere to be seen, not around and like all these bad things happen. I need to kind of sit back and be like, aha, that's what you get. You didn't really do anything there, dude. So to me, it's not, it's less of a story about revenge as it is about karma. And while the count kind of initiates things and, and kind of sets karma in motion, he doesn't fully do all of the revenge or the plotting. He just kind of, fate kind of just happens to a certain degree. And there's definitely some things that he does like with the uh, telegraph, I think. That one, the, the manipulation for the stock market or whatever it was, that was fantastic and, and well sought out. That was well planned, cool but not everything that happened. He can't anticipate all of the family, all the family drama and playing and people changing their wills and doing these things. He couldn't have anticipated and planned for any of that. So that was far-fetched and very plot conveniency. 
it is very much too slow. There's a little way more details than I care to, to hear about, which I've said way too much fluff. I've one of the mentioned, uh, one of the examples that I've said in past videos is that you hear about the telegraph operators, vegetable garden and how he thinks his neighbors are stealing his strawberries or something. And it's like, why do I need to know that? It's, you know, you talk about, you talk to this guy for a couple of pages about those things and then he's done, he's gone. Like, just take that out. That doesn't need to be there. You could have just cliff notes, you know, two paragraphs of that whole sequence, but it has, that it's like five to 10 pages. It's like its own chapter section. So I just wanted one specific example and some of the other behind the family scenes drama and they're, they're talking and just, it's just a lot of, a lot of fluff can be cut out. And that's probably why there's so many abridged versions because it knows that you can, you can tailor it down. And I, I will say that, you know, this is 200 year old story. So thinking of, I'm trying to place myself back then and reading these and those styles. And, you know, back then you, you only read, you either went to the theater or you read books. There wasn't TV. There wasn't that much entertainment. You sat in your home with people. You had people over, you sat in your, your foyer, your library, your study, whatever the hell they call their, their, their things. You drink your sherry or your wine and you read. So I guess, you know, when Dumas was writing this, he was, you know, when people read this, it was like, this is their entire focus. This is all the entire entertainment that they're going to read for X amount of time. So like, maybe if you locked me in a log cabin with zero technology and I'm just sitting there by myself or with my wife and it's like, yep, you just have this one book to entertain yourself. Maybe I'll enjoy it a little bit more, but that's just not how today is. There's so much other stimulus and medium and you need to kind of like, it just doesn't fit with now, at least for me as a reader. So that's another thing is, but I do understand that back then they would have been perceived different because of how the entertainment was. So I've said that a lot, a lot of things that happen are out of the count's hands. He initiates some things, but then it's a domino effect and some other things that happen just by chance. And it's like, oh, hey, that's great. That all these things happen. And even toward the end of the book, things escalate so much. He just like, wow, I didn't think this was going to happen. That escalated way more than I anticipated. And it's like, yeah, because you didn't really do much. You, you kind of shoved a little bit and you aided little things here and there, but you didn't do all of this. And that's just what happens when you, you start some chaos, you start a fire. Sometimes the fire gets out of control, but you're not controlling the fire. Another thing about this, besides the plot conveniences, is that people in this book are so stupid. A lot of the secondary or the the other characters um, that he's manipulating or being around are so stupid. They're very gullible. He tell the count will tell them anything, and they're just eating out of his hands. Like, oh yeah, and they believe him. Like, no matter what his story is, no matter what he's doing. They just believe him. And the biggest thing that is so stupid is that nobody recognizes him. One person, literally one person recognizes him their entire, their entire time. Nobody else recognizes him. Okay, there was a neighbor that he grew up with. There was a person that he was on his, his shipmate with. And then somebody else that absolutely hated him. Usually if you hate somebody or if you're going to live with somebody on a ship or if you're going to be neighbors with somebody, you're probably going to recognize what they look like. But there's no mention as to the count changing his physical appearance. All they say is that he's really pale like a vampire because he just doesn't go out in the sun during the day. Oh, he's pale, completely looks different. Can't tell what, who he is. And there's times in the end of the book when he finally reveals himself to somebody that he's like standing close and he's like, you know me. No, that's not who I am. No, you know me. Think farther back, think farther back. And they still can't get it. And there's times he'll tell them who they are. And he's like, no, no runs out of the room, puts on a captain's hat and a different jacket. And then he's like, oh my God, you're totally him. You're totally Dante's. And you're like, dude, really? That That's what you needed to actually see how they look? Like, let's see that he's, he's that person? But these people are interacting with him constantly during the entire plot that there's never one time where it's like, that guy looks kind of familiar. I feel like I've met you before. Never. It's just, oh yeah, oh, he's a cool, he's a cool guy. No, none of that. And then when they're just like right in their faces, like, hey, yeah, you know me. You know me from this specific spot. Here's a hat that I used to wear. Oh, yeah, cool. You're totally him. Come on, man. Like stuff like that was just so, so ridiculous that nobody recognized him. But, you know, I guess it drove the drama some. And then, I mean, this might have been a thing with the time period. I don't know if they actually acted like this or if they just did it in books or in theater. But people were so dramatic back then, you know, with constant ladies fainting over the little dumbest things to just say, like they're in a courtroom and somebody says, oh, this person was stabbed. And then there's like, oh, a dozen ladies just fainted and passed out. Like, come on, man. 
I guess it's a time period thing, but one of the other parts that I posted on my Instagram and a story, and I laughed out loud for this pretty hard because it was so ridiculous. And I don't think it was meant to be funny, but I laughed a lot more than I should have. And that is later on, one of the people um, is escaping and gets, gets stabbed, gets mugged and gets stabbed and, and it, they get assaulted and stabbed. And, a, and as, after they get, after the person runs away, cause he's faking to be dead. And as after the person runs away, instead of yelling, Hey, help, I've just been stabbed. Hey, help somebody go get that person. Or I need a medical or something. They literally, he literally yells, help. I've been murdered. The castle of, uh... what is dead? He must have died while carving it. Oh, come on. Well, that's what it says. Look, if he was dying, he wouldn't bother to carve arg. He'd just say it. Well, that's what's carved in the rock. Like, that's so, such a ridiculous line. Help, I've been murdered. No, you haven't been murdered or else you wouldn't be able to say you've been murdered. You've been stabbed. You might be dying, but you haven't been murdered. That was just really funny to me. I thoroughly enjoyed the unintentional comedy in that sequence, but it just showed how dramatic they can be. Uh, some other small nitpicky things. This might, this might just be me, honestly, comprehension and stuff. A lot of the names were way too similar to me. You have Candoros, you have Cal Calcutti, you have other people with the, the same C names. You have, um, you have the Morcriffs, the Morels, the Mer Mercedes, all the Messieurs, a lot of alliteration. It's like every character bunches were like, he just selected a, a, a letter and made a bunch of names within that same letter. Um, there's a lot of V's, there's a lot of D's, there's a lot of M's. Yeah, so the characters kind of got hard to keep straight because they were so interconnected. And then like within the same paragraph or different, depending on the context, their names would change constantly. Their names and the titles and like, keeping those straight was also really hard and complicated. And that might also be a time period thing that I wasn't aware of. Cause I know like the abbreviations for Monsieur Madame, I didn't know before reading this book, I had to actually Google it to see what the heck this M dot MME thing was. Uh, so I guess stylistically, it's just not comfortable with me and I had a hard time adjusting. So that, that might be just something odd. that's not necessarily a criticism to the book, but just one thing that made it hard to comprehend for people reading it now that might not be used to it. So uh, I guess I'll kind of start stop my rant and my reflection here. That's how I felt about a lot of it. You know, so I guess overall too long, too many details. I like the revenge idea, but it there were too many plot conveniences. Um, I would really, really, really like to see if there was a newer type version of Count of Monte Cristo. So if you have any suggestions book-wise, what are some retellings of Count of Monte Cristo? There has to be some out there uh, that are have these revenge type stories because I would love to read those. I said I like I love the premise of this. I love a lot about it, but just I think the time period, the style, the length, um, all of those things wasn't a fan of. Uh, I know Dumas got paid by the word. I've heard about that. So you know, I guess a lot of writers were so they just make their things way longer than they need to be. If you like these type of literature classics, uh, I think you should definitely check it out. I think I'm, I might be in the minority for the kind of hate that I'm putting on it or other people might just um, agree. But when I, I know when I announced this and I've posted some pictures on my story, my Instagram story, people have commented and uh, sent me a message like, oh my God, I love this book. It's so great. It's one of my favorites, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, yeah, I have my issues. So it's not just me, um, but I will say because it is, it is huge. It is 1250 pages and it is like teeny tiny writing 1200 pages so having said all that you kind of make your own judgment of what you think uh, i would totally recommend an abridged version if you're going to read it find a good abridged version because you know i, I really wish i would have read an abridged version but i'm also now glad that i've gone through this that i read it i feel a kind of a sense of achievement as to reading this long thing it's definitely out of my comfort zone and those that's good to do at times read and do things out of your comfort zone but now i can have this uh rant and rave disclaimer video or rant and rave uh reflections video so let me know your thoughts i'm okay if you hate my opinions on the count of monte cristo i might be on the minority of this but let me know what you think 
Uh, let me know if you're thinking about reading it. If you have any other questions or want to discuss anything down in the comments, let's do that. And I uh, hope I didn't hurt too many feelings. Thank you.